I'm Frederick and welcome to Figment. So the goal of this video is to explain a little bit about the possibilities of Figment, what it can do, and then show the very basics of how to get started with the application. So let's first talk about the goal of Figment. Why did we create the software? The idea was that a bunch of uh, things that we have to do in machine learning are actually quite intense to do. For example, creating a setup where you can create data for a machine learning algorithm. So even before the training, you have to prepare that data. And that requires often a lot of work and a lot of coding. And we wanted to avoid this step by allowing you to do that in, uh, in a way that's visual. If you read this documentation using Figment with pix to pix for example, it shows you one of the setups that we want to do, which is here, these conditional networks. So we have an input image, basically a segmentation and an output image. And what we wanted to do was be able to create from uh, output demo images, create these input images. But that's quite hard without code. So that's why we created Figment for that. Um, the other thing that it turns out that it's really good at, and I can show you an example of this, uh, turns out that once the machine learning is trained, we can actually use Figment to create these interactive installations. So in this case, I'm taking the webcam image, transforming it, resizing it, blah, 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 doing all kinds of stuff with it. And at some point, I'm turning this into an image to image model. So this model is actually a, a thing that is created in a machine learning algorithm. It's trained and now I can use it in Figment to start working with it. Now this is based on a full pose, so it doesn't really work on just the top part of my body as I see here. It gives this weird, or tries to make a body out of it, but it doesn't really work. So if I cover this, it will actually use this movie that I have here, which you can see. Um, so it switches in between these and this produces much better results. Um, so that's what you can see from the output. So this is also something useful that it can do and they will show in later videos. But right now, we'll just want to show the basics of the software. So when it starts up, you see that you get this default network, which loads a movie, resizes it, does some things with it, and then produces some output. But what does it actually do? Well, again, it's trying to create these setup for a conditional network. So basically showing two things side by side, a finished image, and then an image that can be used to create that image. So in this case, it would be something like an edge detection where you get these waves of the sea sort of describing what the sea would look like. And then this is the image that we want the AI to learn. Note that Figment itself doesn't do any AI um, learning. Uh, all it does is prepare the data for AI learning. So this is really important. The learning itself, you would do in something like Google Colab or uh, we use paper space, or you can run it locally on a machine. Uh, we can show you that in a later video. But right now, let's talk about the basics. So we load in a movie, and all of these steps that you see here are nodes. And you see, the moment I click a node, I can actually see its parameters in the sidebar. So load movie has the file of the movie, whether it's animating or not, and then the speed of the movie, which I can go faster like this, or like 0 0.2 to make it really slow. Uh, and then I have this restart button. Resize has different parameters. So in this case, it has a width and a height. It has, okay, well, if this size is not the same as the original size, how would this image fit into the box? So it can contain it, and then I can set a background color, for example. Um, I can also fill it, which means I stretch the image in order to fit the resolution. Uh, so all of these nodes have their own options. Some of them don't. So Sobel, for example, doesn't have any parameters, and then you don't see anything here, but most of them will have some parameters, as you can see. Um, in order to create our own node, what we want to do is double click and then we can go through this list of all the nodes that are built into Figment. Um, there are nodes that maybe don't make much sense anymore, but it's all, of course, uh, you're free to just try out things. Most of them have some documentation. And then also on the website, we actually document all of the nodes. Um, I can show you that quickly. So if you go to the reference and then look at levels, for example, uh, you can look at what this specific node is doing. So let's create that one. So I can double click here on levels. It's creating this node, but because it's not connected yet, it requires this input here. It will show up as this um, squares, which means um, I'm still waiting for input here. So we have input here, this, this uh, movie. Let's send it back to normal speed and then take the output here. So we can drag from the output into the input and that will connect our levels thing. To disconnect, what we do is we drag from this output here or this lower node uh, we drag up 
and then we remove the connection. Note that it leaves in the last image, but it doesn't actually play because it's no longer connected. So again, we can connect from here to here to connect it, and then from here we drag up to disconnect it. All right, so levels is quite useful because it can do a bunch of things. So for example, it can change the saturation, so it can make a grayscale, we can change the contrast, and note all I'm doing here is I click a parameter and then drag left or right to change its values. I can also type in a value, for example, I can just type two, um, but there are bounds to these values. So a lot of these have bounds. So for example, the brightness, if I type something like 100, it doesn't actually work because the maximum is just one. So let's reset this to zero. Let's reset this to zero. And imagine, um, well, zero doesn't make sense. Let's put one here. Um, if you don't know what a value is of a parameter, you can also do revert to default. So if this is set to like a one key value, you can do revert to default and then we'll put in the default value here. All right, let's work from here. Actually, let's work from resize. Imagine one of the things that we can do with machine learning is um, color black and white images. So in order to do that, we would give it a color image and then remove the color and then train it backwards, basically do the inverse. So in order to do that, we can resize this, this here. We're gonna remove these nodes and then we'll use this levels node here. So we want to create a black and white version of this. So we're put, cranking the saturation all the way to zero. And then we put these two side by side by using this stack node, as you can see here. Now we have a colored version of it and a black and white version of the same image. And then finally we have this out node. And this is useful to talk about a little bit in the, the out node is what actually gets shown if we want to show this full screen. So if you do here, view full screen, this is actually what we see, this is the out node. But important to realize is that the out node right now uses the resolution of whatever comes in. So if this thing looks a bit weird and I can do it by, for example, stacking vertically, so now the two are um, on top of each other. If I now show this full screen, you will see it goes all wonky because what it's trying to do is sort of map this resolution to the native resolution of my screen, which is a very different resolution. So this would work really well if my screen would be vertical, but in horizontal mode, it doesn't really make sense. So in that case, what we want to do is put a resize node in um, and in that resize node, put the values of the screen. So 1920 by 1080, um, and then here, yeah, we can use cover, but we lose a lot of the image. So let's put this to contain. So we'll actually fit in like this. And you can see if I change the background, most of it will actually be this background color. So put it to black, put that in the out. And now if we go to view full screen, you can see that this is actually mapped the way we want. But if we have a screen in the other uh, direction, we would probably want to flip these around. So 1080 by 1920. All right, so next, imagine now that we are happy with this, we want to put these side by side again, but now we want to save a bunch of these images, right? We want some output of this data. So what we can do here is we can go to file render, and now you can see that it's, this is the note or the option that would actually allow you to render out all the save image notes, which we don't have yet. So this one doesn't actually allow us to save anything. And that's because there's multiple saves that you can do inside of the frame, um, uh, inside of the system. But right now what we're gonna do is just add a save image here after the out. And here we can look at the parameters. So we can say, okay, we want to save this on export, which is a default. You can also put it to always, and then we'll actually save in real time as we're running Figment here. Um, we can set our folder to this export folder. I already have one here. So this is on my desktop, it's this one. And then the template is the file names. You see these hashtags are going to be replaced with the file number, so 0001 and so forth. And then the extension, I will change to JPEG because it goes a bit faster. And also, yeah, the quality is then set to pretty high value, so 90%, which means that they will look almost lossless. Um, cool, and now that we can have that, we can say render we can render 100 frames at a frame rate of 30. Now here, this is still a bit iffy in Figment because we have to know what the input frames are. We can sort of look at the length of the, of the video and then calculate that by uh, looking at its frame rate. So for example, if it's one second, it would be 60 frames. If it's two seconds, it would be 120 frames. I think it's a bit longer, so let's export it like this. You see it goes pretty quickly. And then once that's done, we can look at our export folder 
here and we see the actual frames and those we can send to a machine learning uh, step. So these are the very, very basics of Figment, but hopefully that helps. And in the next video, we'll dive a bit deeper into the whole application.